Ladies and gentlemen, we are back. Episode four of I Called That. I'm Martin Montana. He's Charlie Marlowe. Charlie, I got to be honest, you know, we just started this deal here, but this is a, uh, a pretty boring week or weekend in sports. Yes, it's it's one of those uh, opportunities. I always like to, to take the negative and spin it positively. It's That's an right. opportunity for us to show that, hey, we can we can still shine. We can do a great, informative, potentially funny podcast, even though it was a really boring sports weekend, which normally on a Monday, you come in like my radio show. Monday is usually the easiest day because you have three days worth of content. And I'm thinking to myself, I had no interest in watching the Pro Bowl, the yes. NHL All-Star Game. And I'm sorry, I love America. I want us to win every medal. I just don't care about the Winter Olympics at all. Let's, uh, let's start with the Pro Bowl. The, because that's, it's just a, what an interesting concept. Um, sure. And here's where I draw the line with the Pro Bowl, because unlike the NBA All-Star Game, where you know the general idea is like, no one wants to get hurt. We're just going to have a good time when you're playing basketball, you know, you just don't really play defense and yeah, you just have some fun, but how with football, I mean, remember when it was just a standard game and you're like, who wants to tackle other at full speed, other than I guess, Sean Taylor, right. Rest in peace. Who wants to like go tackle somebody or be tackled when it's like, this doesn't mean anything. I don't like, I don't want you don't hit me. <laughs> I would be like, just don't hit me. All right. Like just, I'll go out of bounds. I'll take a knee. That's where, look, the NBA, they don't play a ton of defense in the regular season anyway, maybe at the end of the game, but the NBA all-star game, I would watch that because it's going to be 160 to 150. You're going to see a bunch of threes. You're going to see a bunch of dunks, whatever. The pro bowl, first of all, nobody wants to get hurt. Why would you, why would you want you, you, you were eliminated a month ago. And then what? You want to stay in shape? You want to stay in football shape to then play an exhibition game? You don't want to get injured. Oh, by the way, nobody from the best two teams that are in the Super Bowl, the Bengals right now, and, uh, and obviously the Rams, are going to be able to participate. Right. And, and it's flag football. Like, and I get it. If I was in the Pro Bowl back in the day, it would be cool to go to Hawaii. But the last thing I want to do is rip up my knee or Achilles playing an exhibition game. So it becomes a flag football game. I didn't watch one second of it. No, nope. I didn't watch one second of the NHL all-star game, even though our guy from the blues, Jordan Cairo won the fastest skater competition. And this is also where I potentially draw the line because I love to gamble on almost anything. And I'm not the person that usually throws out that, Oh, degenerate. Like when people say, Oh, I'm going to bet spring training baseball. It kind of makes me laugh, but all these people that are like, I'm going to bet the pro bowl over, I'm going to bet the NHL (laughs) all-star game over. Like no one's even trying. No, it's not a real barometer for anything. I mean, it's, it'd be the worst bet. And the only, I did not watch any of the pro bowl, which is, this is why it's great. This is why it's great to just, there's nothing more American than having a strong opinion on something we didn't even watch, (laughs) but, but you know, I, the only thing I saw was this, this running clip on sports center with when they did the race, you know, and it's Micah Parsons with his shirt off. Uh, and I guess Tyreek Hill, he like, he was a kind of jogging or he's, you know, he didn't really care. So he, he wasn't really of the four people didn't seem like he cared at all. I'm like, you know, lining. I don't know. I just, none of it felt like it's, it's you need to have the guys race, you know, it's like, uh, then they were jumping into like a mat doing some acrobatic catch but they're falling into a mat. They got no pads on. It's all, it's just like some weird, right. It's like weird, like skills thing. They're making them do. I didn't, it all looked weird to me. I'm like, I don't need to see a receiver in street clothes falling on the, you know, gym mats. I'm not into it. That, that's where normally on a Monday morning, when I do radio, if somebody says, Hey, did you watch this game? I feel like I, I come across as, as not very credible. If I say, no, I didn't watch it. Now, clearly in St. Louis, Missouri, I got to watch the Cardinals. I got to watch the blues, St. Louis, U basketball. Other than that, this morning, I had no problem saying I have no interest in the pro bowl. We'll talk about Alvin Kamara. That was more interesting to me. I have no interest in the NHL all-star game. Everybody was talking about machine gun Kelly playing. 
uh, and all that. And then again, the Olympics, like last night I was, I was on Twitter and I saw the big, the big scandal was that it was women's hockey, I believe, Canada versus the Russians. The Russians did not give out their COVID results and then they weren't going to play. And then they, they're already playing with the cages. So they played with masks. And I hate getting into the whole mask debate and the whole political football that that is. But just the thought, I didn't even watch it. So again, I'm going to have my hot take on something I watched zero seconds of. Yes, yes. So just the idea of them wearing masks. And also like, are we trusting Russia? I mean, they didn't give their results. To me, that means they probably had a bunch of positive tests and then, oh, the results aren't here. Like, I don't even really care. These are the best athletes in the world. I think they'll be fine. Some of them probably have COVID and they're asymptomatic and not even to get into the whole politics of that, but it's just like dumb. It's all dumb. Well, it's all dumb. And it's hilarious when adults play kids games because that's literally my, you know, dog ate my homework. Like, oh, we're just not going to give them to you. Why? Because they're all such great results, right? Because nobody has COVID and you just don't want to share. I'm not a lawyer, but of course that pretty much means multiple people have it. So that's why you don't want to share it. And you're just going to be a baby and go, no, we're not going to share it. And then, right, force their hand to wear a mask. It's, it's a disaster. It's a total disaster. And I hate to be stereotypical because I don't like to be that guy. But if before the Olympics But, started, but here you go. <laughs> but, again, on something I watched zero seconds of. But if you ask me before the Olympics, hey, if there was a country that was going to not reveal their COVID results, which countries would you guess? I would probably throw Russia... China, th those would be my first couple guesses. Yes. And so the fact that Russia seems like they're trying to be a little sneaky with the COVID, it's, it's a little par for the course. For I me. would throw Russia, China. I mean, we're going to play the game. I would also throw Germany. I just feel like they have a history, uh, you know, right, of like everyone's doing steroids and hiding. I mean, I guess there's so many countries, but I don't, I, those would maybe be my three and say, you know. You that, know. That's interesting. So I feel like, as you should, you know, Germany is getting punished for for things that happened 80 years ago and then east germany so that's creeping into your 50s 60s 70s 80s i feel like germany now they're very well behaved but when you think of east germans you do think of like uh women bodybuilders that that's are exactly it. The size yeah. of us that's exactly what i think about i mean the so did you ever watch the Olympics like as a kid? Because as a kid, I, I remember, I remember watching it. I remember, especially um, the winter Olympics I could get into. So I could get into the bobsled. You know what I mean? I could watch downhill skiing. I could watch ski jump. I mean, I could, you know, I could watch a decent amount of winter stuff back in the day when I was a kid and I liked it. Uh, and it was like, how many medals do we have? And, and all that, but I mean, that faded real fast. I mean, I don't even think past high school, I like had any real interest in Olympics. See, I'm the opposite. I, I used to pay attention to the summer Olympics. I've almost never had any interest in the winter Olympics. And then this year with no NHL players with the hockey, I mean, in the past, like if it's Canada versus us for the gold, I'll probably tune in. Even if it's, if it's the women this time around, because I know the men, you have some you have some former players, some young guys going on. But as you said that, I'm trying to think of my interest in the Winter Olympics over the years. And it's, it's, it's based on scandals or cool runnings. Like my only right. <laughs> interest was I watched Cool Runnings with John Candy back in the day. I like that movie. So that's my only, my only knowledge of, of the bobsled is from Cool Runnings. And I guess Jamaica is actually back in it. I read that. So I didn't. You wanted to see like, you watch Cool Runnings and then you wanted to see like what the real team if they had a real team and if they were, if they were any good. Right. And then, yeah. so, and these are probably about the same year. I don't know what, what year cool runnings came out, but I'm guessing it's between 92 and 95. So then the other big thing was of course, Nancy Kerrigan. I mean, I was, I oh, was yeah. watching, I was watching the winter Olympics that year because of course, Tanya Harding and someone else hired someone to bash Nancy Kerrigan's knee. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I hate to say it, but, uh, what, what do they say? Uh, any publicity is good publicity. That made me, even though I was about 12, I wanted to watch that Olympics because everybody was talking about Nancy Kerrigan. 
That was a big deal. By the way, Cool Runnings was 1993. So nice, uh, nice bracket there you just gave. That's, that would have been a good betting bracket to see if you were inside or out, but yeah. So, well, think about that. So that was the 94 Olympics. 94, so you yeah. have Nancy Kerrigan, the huge, huge monster story. And then if Cool Runnings came out the year before, and that's getting all these people into the Winter Olympics that never got into it. I can see how the 94 Winter Olympics, that was probably the peak for me. That was 12 year old. But you were into summer Olympics? Yeah. I mean, like, I mean, to for, me, other than the 100 yard dash. Well, yeah. When I, mean, I say, when I say I'm into it, I think the swimming is cool. I think yeah. track and field is cool. Again, so you're, you're what, about 43? Yeah. Okay. Right so, on the nose. <laughs> right. I remember we asked this. I have a terrible memory. So I'll be 40 this year. Like I remember I was a little bit after Carl Lewis. I feel like Carl mm. Lewis was towards the end, like in 92, I believe. So I would have been 10. You probably remember this though. Remember Dan and Dave? Dan the, and Dave. The, yes. The, the decathlete. So Dan and Dave, one of them was O'Brien. I can't remember his name, but they were Nike I guys. I think it was Dan O'Brien, Dave Johnson. Okay. See, I would not have guessed that, but like one of them didn't even make it right. They were having this, this huge marketing. I feel like we saw those dudes for a year. And then the one guy didn't even make it. I think that Dan O'Brien actually won maybe potentially. Yeah, I believe so. They had the, the campaign was Nike. So right. they were all over commercials kind of around. Was this around the same time as Bo Jackson when Nike was just kind of getting I should crazy up, that feels to me like it was the 92 olympics um correct me if i'm wrong and then when you go track and field i think it was the 96 olympics wasn't that michael johnson and then donovan bailey did he win the the 100 then they did the they did the 150 meter race remember to see who was the best sprinter and michael johnson yep. pulled up lame he said he pulled a hammy but maybe he was gonna lose that type of situation yeah, I mean, I, I definitely, well, I remember watching Carl Lewis, of course, because he was, he was unbelievable. But then I'm, I'm trying to get my years straight here because uh, who was the, who was the, um, the Canadian dude that, that did steroids and then he set the world record, but then he got busted? That was 88. That was Ben Johnson. That was Ben Johnson, right. I think that was in the 80s. Yeah, 87, 88 season, he held the title of the world's. You know, he, he ran it in like seven seconds. He ran, he was, he was unbelievably jacked and unbelievably fast. <laughs> yeah. And then he got busted. I mean, you know, I look at one point he moved, he was a, he was a physical human who moved the fastest. He could still say that. Okay. Right? So this could get me in trouble, but I don't really care. You know, I'm not, I'm not pro steroids, but sometimes when we're doing these events that are basically feats of strength, yeah. if you're doing some of this stuff, I know some of it's worse than others, but maybe this is more of a conversation like with HGH and baseball. I mean, let's be honest. The steroids era was really cool. Like it was really yeah. fun. You yes. see dudes hitting the ball 600 feet and hitting 70 homers. Like I'm not advocating for kids to do steroids. And I understand that's part of this conversation, but watching a juiced up Ben Johnson just obliterate records, I would probably be really entertained by that. Well, it's because we are entertained by it because sports is entertainment. And if you, I mean, if, if we're going to, if we're going to agree, so this is how I would get, get you into this conversation. If we're going to agree that sports is entertainment, would you agree with that? hundred percent. Okay. Right. Cause it's, a, it's, it's all, you know, made up in a sense of the games and here are the rules to the game. And well, here's the winner and here's the loser. I mean, we, we made all that up, right? We just created it and now we do it. And it's so popular that professionally you can own a team. You can pay people lots of money to do it if they're good enough to do it. I mean, that's the system that's been created. So if we're agreeing it's entertainment, what's the difference between that and professional wrestling? And if you're going to go along with that general thought that, Hey, it's for our entertainment, then has anyone had a real problem with, you know, Triple H being, being juiced out of his mind or go down the list of wrestlers that take steroids? Like, is anyone, is that a scandal over there? Or is everyone just like, well, look at how, look at how big and jacked he is. You know, that's, that's what we paid to see. And, and that's just pure entertainment. So 
to me, there's the argument of what you're saying is like, well, look, I mean, we all kind of want this, whether we're, whether we're, you know, subconscious about it or conscious about it. We all kind of want that, you know, we all kind of like, yeah, show me the biggest, the baddest, and let me see what they can do competing against each other. That's kind of what we're gunning for. So this is why it's so blurry because you're like, well, then how do you, if you're going to go that step and say, everybody can do it, how do you regulate that? And if you let them all, this, this, is a, this is a crazy, crazy thought, but if you let them all do steroids in professional sports, can you really like outdo someone in steroids? <laughs> like, could I take more, so much more than you? Or isn't it the idea that your body's only going to do so much with it? And then all the, the lifting and working out you do, will, will, you'll, you'll, peak, you'll peak at some point and I'll peak at some point, correct? Like I can't take more and create some kind of edge. Like our bodies are going to be capped out somewhere. Yeah, I think that's interesting. It also depends on, you know, you could take more and, and maybe you have a shorter life after the fact. I think with some of these sports though, now if we're talking about straight up just lifting weights, you want to add as much muscle as possible, but still you can only add so much muscle mass to your, your tendons and your ligaments to a point where they'll literally just, it won't work. I mean, you'll, that's right. you see these dudes who are like, oh, my bicep <laughs> fell off. Hey, my, my, uh, my deltoid got detached. Like that's not a normal injury that you actually see in a sport. I like have your you ever, have you ever had that injury? Have you had, no, any of those? no, but it's like, oh my gosh, this guy's whole lat got displaced uh, as yeah. he was doing lat pull. It's like maybe dude, maybe you were pushing it to capacity. Maybe just, Hey, just maybe um, the whole pro wrestling thing. I would say it's, it's about a fixed outcome versus what's still a competitive outcome. That would be the difference. However, I think we agree in the sense, and my, my radio co-host, Cam Jansen, who played in the NHL for about 10 years, he always jokes about this, but I don't think he's even really joking. He's like, just have a separate steroids league, right? Just have, you can have the league MLB, and then you can have the steroids league. And it's almost like the XFL, like the XFL had different rules. To me, if you're signing up, to play football, right? You are signing up. Like, you know, going in, you have a very good chance of getting CTE. You have a very good chance of the rest of your life. You probably won't be able to walk the same. You might have hip issues, knee issues. It's tough for those dudes after a while to get out of bed, to swing a golf club. Like you could look at a, a study that basically if you play in the NFL, your lifespan is going to be shorter. So that being said, now you're doing that because the reward, the reward mm -hmm. is you're going to make $500,000 a year at minimum. You're potentially going to make whatever, 30, $35 million as a quarterback, but you do know the risks involved. So that being said, if you had a steroids league and some dudes are like, Hey man, Hey, just give me a good five, 10 years. Let me be in the steroids league. Let me make a bunch of money. Let me take care of my family, the next generation and whatever happens happens. I mean, this is America. That's not a bad, I mean, they look, that's not a bad idea. The steroids league. I would, you immediately got me to think I would watch it at least the first season, you know, hundred percent. You bought, I'd be like, I got to see this. How big, how big are these, how big are these guys? How big is it? I mean, wouldn't it be great if it was like, it's just cartoon. Like, you know what I mean? Like the, the, the quarterback can't even get his arms together to get under center. <laughs> like Everyone's just so outrageously ripped. You're like, this is crazy. You know, I didn't think this was possible, <laughs> but dude, that's why, Look, when the 98 home run chase happened, I was 16 years old and I'm playing sports and I was into working out. But like, like now we look at those pictures. When you look at video of Mark McGuire swinging yeah. a baseball bat in 1998, I just laugh. I laugh. Yeah. The bat, the bat looks like this. This is my pen. Yeah. <laughs> yes. It's a toothpick. Yeah. And he's got essentially a soccer ball for a deltoid, bicep, forearm, buttock. Uh, hamstring, buttock, buttock like, singular. <laughs> every part of his body is a is a huge muscle belly, like a ball. Yeah. And you look at it now, and you realize, like, how do we not see this? Yeah, yeah. I mean, his forearm was like you know both of my legs. Like honestly, that's not even like like stretch. Uh, but that's why we no one really pried in because you just didn't like. You're enjoying the show, you know. Why ruin that? You're just you're into it. You're like. This is amazing. Let's keep it going. Let's keep the good times rolling. And I mean, let's be honest, MLB wasn't exactly like, whoa, oh, well, let's really, 
let's really turn down these ratings guys. You know, I mean, they still did the, the ESPN still did the 30 for 30 on, on that whole era with Sosa and McGuire. And I, and like, none of them are still even like, all right, I admit it. I was all juiced. Up. <laughs> it's like, you're like, really guys, we're, we're paying homage to it, but like, no one can just be like, yeah, yeah. I mean, I did a ton of steroids. <laughs> well, to me, the biggest hypocrisy, I can't remember if we've talked about this before, but the whole hall of fame debate. Yeah. It's just oh hilarious. yeah. No, we have not talked about it. Yeah. But it's hilarious to me. And, and we could, we could talk about big poppy, which was a, a week or so ago, but you know, big poppy gets in because we like him, which is fine. He gets in because he was big poppy. He's fun. After the Boston bombing, he took the mic and he said, this is our effing city, which is cool. I like big poppy, but he also had a positive test. He actually had a positive test. So you're going to put big poppy in, but you're not going to put Barry Bonds in. You're not yeah. going to put Roger yeah. Clemens in. So that yeah. makes to me, the writers look worse because you're basically putting in people you like. Because Big Poppy was not as good as Barry Bonds. And don't get me wrong, I think they both should be in. But putting one guy in and the other makes no sense. And here's, here's to me even the bigger hypocrisy. You just mentioned, baseball wasn't, turn, they weren't turning down the ratings in 1998. They weren't no. like, oh, what's going on? They were loving it. Business was booming. Everybody was making money. They were coming back off the strike where it took a while for fans to come back. You had Cal Ripken with the streak, and then you had the 98 home run chase to bring folks back. But the biggest hypocrisy is in the Hall of Fame, guess who's in the Hall of Fame? Bud Selig, the commissioner that <laughs> oversaw the steroids era. Right. Guess who else? Tony La Russa. I love Tony La Russa. But Tony La Russa benefited from McGuire and Canseco, and he won a bunch of games, right? All these managers that benefited, all these general managers that won World Series with steroids players, they're in the Hall of Fame, but the players aren't getting in? I don't think that's exactly. Fair. I mean, no, that's a great point. I mean, that's, that's, that's a shining example of, right, you can have a, a writer gets to dictate their thoughts on that when you, you can look at how it's played out. I mean, Bonds is the perfect example. You know, you, you don't even have to name anybody else. But if you're going to tell me, Ortiz or other people, you know, that had a test that go in and Barry Bonds, just go look at, go look at his accolades and stat lines. And you're going to tell me he's not, no, he's not in. Why? Oh, because, you know, steroids, which I guess technically for him are alleged, right? Is that correct? Like he never, they don't technically have a proven test on him, which again, that's not the point of what I'm saying, but yeah, you're going to say no, because why steroids? Okay. So then how would you ever explain anybody else like an Ortiz or someone who maybe doesn't have a paper positive test like Bonds, but who's highly suspected uh, that's in like, what, what do you guys, it's, it's just, it really looks backwards and it's, and it is kind of, it is kind of a joke. Like, look, the, these, these, these guys, these athletes, like this is they accomplished all that. They really did that. And to your point of everybody else, around above on the side benefiting where 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 do you get to quote unquote ban them where do you get to uh hit them back you don't you don't they and, all they all made, they made a ton of money and uh whatever rings or pennants that they have those are all proudly displayed somewhere right they're not giving them back you know all the people that all the people imagine all the owners, you know, around like Roger Clemens and all those, all those years he played and they're like, great. And then what now there's probably now that, you know, they're like, well, I'm not involved. I'm not involved with the hall of fame stuff. You know, I'm not a writer. Yeah. And that's where Barry Bond specifically, I'm a, I'm a bit of a stat dork. So I love going to baseball reference and just looking. If you look at Barry Bond's stats, now he was always really good back in the day with the pirates, even early giants, but clearly he's doing something. And he got, he got way better. He started to hit more home runs. But if you look at his numbers, he basically walked or hit a home run like every time he was up. Yeah. I mean, his numbers for on base and slugging are ridiculous. Like if you thought they were good, go back and look at them again. They're absurd that he would basically walk or he'd get one pitch to hit and he hit a home run. Yeah. Like that was the last seven years of his career. Yeah, I mean, as, when he would come to bat, if you're a pitcher, the only thing you didn't want to do is give up a home run. You give up a, a single, a double, you know what I mean? 
for a lot of these guys is like, just don't give up the home run. I'd rather walk him or fine, let him get a hit. And then he just goes and cranks one. You're like, that's the, you had one job, you know, it's like, that's it. That's I'm with you, man. I'm with, let's go. I, I got to go back quickly. Yes. To the, to the pro bowl. Mm -hmm. And you mentioned it, but Alvin Kamara. Yes. Okay. I don't know the details other than what I, what I read online. I don't know if something new has come out, but he was arrested at like five something PM local time. Uh, if I get it right for battery at outside or in a club, is, is this the, is this the information you have? Yes. My source okay. is in Vegas. That's me uh, Googling this and then reading an article. No, right. this is, again, this will be my second hot take surrounding a sport that I watched zero seconds of, which is the uh, pro bowl. Because when I see this report that Alvin Kamara got uh, arrested at 5.50 p.m., I was more impressed with how quickly he got arrested after the Pro Bowl. Like, if you hear a story, oh, somebody in Vegas or anywhere, hey, they got arrested at 2 a.m., midnight, 3 a.m., like, okay, people are drunk, people are fighting, it's Vegas, it's par for the course. But when I saw that, I go, 5.50? Because I'm like, I know this was a day game. So I'm like, when did it start? So I go and I look right. and it's noon <laughs> local time in Vegas. Yeah. Again, I watched zero seconds. I'm just ballparking. Let's just say yeah. the game went, let's say it went to 3 p.m. Let's say you got to do a couple interviews, um, whatever, you shower, maybe you get some food. But I was more impressed at how quickly he was arrested. So the game ends at three, you're already arrested by 550. I mean, you probably go back to the hotel. I'm guessing you change. So he might have got arrested like in line. Were you waiting in line? To me, that was most impressive was how quickly he was arrested following the game. It was fast. It was very fast. It was almost like, how were you even in, inside of a club yet? Or was it you were walking up and, you know, here comes, here comes Johnny Hot Take with, uh, you know, wants to lay into you about his fantasy football squad. And you're just like, dude, not today, buddy. And he just, and you just clock him. It's like, his. I, I want to know the real story. You know, I want to know the details. Like what, how did that really go down? And, and yeah, that was very fast, very fast. <laughs> like, and it, yeah, it seems like he did damage. Um, I was looking this up too, because I'm thinking Alvin Kamara is not the biggest guy. Who's going to pick a fight? But I can see, all right, you're not going to pick a fight with the six foot five defensive end. Somebody looks like Von Miller, but Alvin Kamara is 5'10", 215. I'm sure he looks pretty big. I'm, I'm sure he's pretty big. But there's probably some frat dude that, you know, somebody yeah. said something to somebody's girl, somebody bumped into a drink, this guy, oh, he looks over, this guy's not too big. And then, oh, boom, Alvin Kamara just probably knocks him out. <laughs> yes. And then he breaks your face. So, yes. so there's that. Enjoy the flight back home to rural Pennsylvania. Except, <laughs> except the fact that if a random person breaks your face, you're like, oh, but then you go, who is, oh, you Google him. Oh, this guy. Oh, he's, he makes about $15 million a year. Okay. All right. I'm going to time to get a lawyer. I'm going to call up a lawyer and see what I can, uh, see what I can whip up here. I'm going to call a personal injury attorney. <laughs> By the way, they, those people love to advertise. They got no shame where, remember we were talking about, you know, realtors and all those things before that you like to have, like, I mean, they are bus stops. They are billboards. I just feel like um, the larger the sign, like the, that's like what they want. You know what I mean? They just want, like if they could, if they could be, if they could cover a jumbotron, a personal injury attorney would do it. Do you hear my daughter, by the way? You I don't. That? You have a good, you have a good microphone there. I do. She just got up. She had her first uh, dentist appointment today at a year, a oh. year and a half. Yes. Well, dude, I don't think I they like do anything, right? I, my wife took her, but I don't think they do anything at a year. They just like say, open your mouth. I mean, what are they going to? I now feel like a terrible parent because my daughter's four and we have not taken her to the dentist yet. I just took her. I just took her to the doctor for her, her four year checkup because she just turned four like two weeks ago. And then the pediatrician yeah. said, Hey, it's time. She gave me the paperwork. Like we had, we've been saying we need to take her to the dentist. My pediatrician didn't shame me. Like she would have said like, uh, yeah, you should have taken her to the dentist. But the fact now, see, this is what happens with parenting. You don't always want to be like competitive about it, but then you tell me 
you take your daughter at a year and a half. And now I feel like my, my daughter is now behind the eight ball and now she's going to have terrible teeth because I've put it off too long. I mean, it's, you know, I guess if we're, if it's a betting show, like the odds are going in that direction. Um, but you know, I mean, you still got time to get in front of it. <laughs> okay. Look, I wouldn't have known. I'll, 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 I'll get your back on this. I wouldn't have known either. Cause to me, I'm like, when you start going, to, I mean, I, you know, I don't have a lot of memories from when I'm four or five years old, but that's maybe somewhere where you start popping in a couple of times a year to a dentist. Like, I don't even know what they did today. Okay. Like she doesn't, she does have a lot of teeth that came in, but yeah, we, we like, you know, she's, she, she doesn't speak English fully yet. Like, what are you, what are you going to ask her to do? She just, she can say mama, dada outside, you know, dog, like. Okay. But also with your teeth, I'm just wondering, like with your baby teeth, if they're all going to fall out. So my daughter has a full mouth of teeth but none of them have fallen out yet. I'm almost wondering like, what does a dentist really do when you have baby teeth that are not your permanent teeth? Yeah, that's fair. I mean, are you, are you saying you think it's sort of, you think it's a racket? You think it's an inside job that they, they pretend to be managing these things that are just going to drop out anyways. Was this in network? This was in network. Yeah. <laughs> is this, this is this covered. Hey, are you saying, are you sag after I, I am. I am. I'm, a, I'm actually, you. well, I'm technically now, I mean, this could be a whole conversation. I'm what's called FICOR, financial core. Okay. Um, longer debate, maybe for another day, but, uh, but yes, I'm still, I can still do union work, but now I'm not exclusive anymore. I can do, I can, I can do things outside if I want to. Nice. I only bring it up because for some reason it makes no sense to me, but local news folks in union towns, are in SAG-AFTRA. And it's the greatest thing ever because it's the greatest health insurance ever in terms of, so we've had two kids and just talking with different folks who, you know, you say, hey, you know, you had a kid, what did it cost, blah, blah, blah. And the SAG-AFTRA health insurance is fantastic. And I always, I always thought it didn't make sense. Why, you know, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a local sports guy in St. Louis. I'm in the same union as Brad Pitt. It doesn't make any sense. Right. And then also- they always send you those, like we get them now. They still send DVDs because yeah, yeah. you're in the SAG after the SAG awards. And so right. it used to be the coolest thing ever. Like in December and January, you would get all the best movies first. You get them all on DVD. Now I don't even have a DVD player. I guess they give you a link to a streaming service or whatever. Yeah. So, so I, when I made the change, so I stopped getting them, but yes, for years, I used to love those. But like, hey, what random movies am I going to watch? So what I did is I gave up my voting rights to allow myself not to only have to do SAG jobs, Yeah, which I, which I was in that mode for many years, but I mean, we, you know, we can get into this if you want, but the, the bottom line Let's is talk about the pension. Yeah. I mean, the, the, the bottom, the general idea is like the commercials. I mean, I have no problem going into it because it's, it is an interesting thing, but the commercials contract and a bunch of these other things. They, they're the only quote unquote union that their, their job is not to help you get any work. So they don't help you find any work at all ever, but they say, if you're going to be a full member, you cannot work anything but union jobs or will ban you for life or whatever they say. So when you research it, there's ways to be like, well, how, how's that legal? Like, how can you tell me I can't go, you know, someone wants to offer me a hundred K I can't take it just cause it's not union. They have to go and follow all the parameters or whatever. So there's a way that you can say, okay, that's not legal. And I have a right. Cause I've been, I've, you know, I earned my way to the union, but if something comes along that I want to do, I have a right to go do it. And I'll just, I'll give up my voting rights. I don't get free DVDs and I don't get uh, to vote on, you know, Gabrielle Carteris as the next president or whatever. It's like, I don't really, I really don't care about that. Okay. So this is, this is very much a niche and maybe nobody's interested in this, yeah. but I always find it funny that you are getting your emails from Gabrielle Carteris yeah. who yeah. for, for our age folks, that's Beverly Hills, 90210. I always found it funny. She was kind of the nerdy, the smart one right. on the show. And then also, by the way, I got all these DVDs for going on. I think I've been in the union for 10 years. I never once voted. I never once voted for the awards once, but I did enjoy all of the DVDs. And I'm pretty sure it was a good Curb Your Enthusiasm episode 
where Larry got in trouble because, you know, you get those DVDs and it says you can't, you can't give them to anybody else. It even has like a warning, like every once in a while, it'll come yeah, up yeah, as a yeah. warning. <laughs> do not, do not replicate, do not distribute this copy of Green Book, yeah. right? Whatever right. it is. Like, it, like it'll explode, right? Like right. it'll, it'll self-destruct. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you know, it's like we could, yeah, I know we, we, we talk about sports here, but any day you want to get me going on SAG after I will, because I, I, you know, I'm not a huge fan of the, 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 like the design of it, like, or I should say the way it's run because I had no problem in it, but I hit a point where, I mean, you'll appreciate this, you know, it's not that things are bad, but when things are good, you want, you want to build and you want to have more good things. Mm -hmm. And so, I mean, this is even in the middle of when I had shock top running and all these different things going on. And my only thing was I was there in LA and I would go to them and I would go to, I would go to me. I was the guy I would go to meetings, like the town hall meetings when they introduced like the new commercials contract or these other things. But I was the only one that would wait to speak at the podium to ask like a hard contradictory type question. I, I, did. Really? I did that many times. Yeah, I did. Cause that's I, interesting. Cause every, you know, you had 200 people there, like all like mindlessly clapping for whatever they're announcing. And it's like, dude, are you guys looking at this? Like their, their new proposal is literally to cut rates across the board. Um, on every type of contract, new media, commercials, you name it. And they want to raise, you know, minimums to qualify for health insurance and all these things. And everyone's clapping. And I'm like, <laughs> I'm like yeah. So I had done some research, right? And I go up, now we're getting way off it, but who cares? So I go up to the podium and I had, I, I, you know, I pulled some numbers and stuff. I wasn't just like, yeah, what's your, what's your problem? You know, I was like, so I asked a very pointed question. I don't remember exactly the, the whole thing now, but it was, it was the, the essence of it was like, look, you guys all up there on the panel are getting paid by SAG after like, literally you get salaries. You certainly get the health insurance, you get retirement, you know, potentially like matching contributions, all of that. But you and I know the only revenue stream in is the percentage you take when, when people work of income, but that's capped up to 500 grand. So Brad Pitt only pays dues up to 500 grand. <laughs> okay. So all these mega stars are like, they're SAG after it. They are, but I mean, a guy that makes a couple hundred is almost paying about as much in dues. And then they of course get their new member fees, which I, my opinion is like, that's a huge thing for them too. Cause they want everyone to get in. Cause then you can get a, three, 4,000 a pop, and they got to continue to pay to be part of it. So anyways, so I asked this whole detailed question and I was like, like, you know, you're, you're reducing this. I said, is that because you don't care? Because you guys kind of know that, you know, you've got this threshold of people, especially the A-list people and the people that are mainstream on television. So you already, you, as a business, you already know, I've got this top line revenue coming in no matter what. So I don't really care about haggling over rates or whatever, even if they go down, because I already know I'm going to make, you know, 500 million or a billion or whatever. And it was like cricket. It was like crickets. No, there was no more clapping when I took the mic. We'll get back to you on that. And yeah. And the guy gave some general, like, no, I mean, you know, we're, we're just trying to, you know, adapt to the times and whatever. And, and, and what that means is because commercials, you know, I mean, I, I've, I've, done a lot in commercials over the years. Like this is how I've been making my living. So I'm very like, on I have to be on top of it. Right. The problem is commercials have gone 70, 80% non-union now. Oh, really? Yeah. It's completely flip-flopped even in, you know, the past 10 years. So they were so slow to react, which is kind of number one, my first indicator, like, I don't know if it's a big financial pain point for them, but then their reaction to it was fine. We'll just lower all of our rates across the board. And hopefully we'll recapture some of the business, but they, but they haven't because I see auditions on both sides. I mean, you'd be shocked, you know, like X, Y, Z corporation, giant, giant, giant corporation can send me a non-union audition for like a peanut rate. And you're like, how's that, how's that happening? It's because, well, they just don't want to deal with the union. Yeah. And you're like, or the same company that five years ago, I, I knew what they would offer for buyouts or contracts. Now they're coming all the way down to like the lower end. And you're like, hmm, 
That's interesting. So it's just changed a lot. I mean, I went on I I I a hard right turn here, but it's, uh, you know, we talk about business and sports is business. I mean, mm -hmm. the numbers don't lie, right? Like you can look into like how people react to certain things and what's, what really affects things. And I mean, that's why to me, like I had to make a personal change there, but uh, I think the more you understand about how something works behind the scenes, then you're like, oh, now I see how people are influenced and in making decisions, you know? And my, my final point on this, I always felt bad for the folks for the pension because you have to go five years. You have to make yeah. a certain amount of money for five years to vest. And I'm, I'm thinking not just TV folks, but yeah, like you said, commercials, actors, how many folks, they do a couple couple commercials, couple shows, they do it two, three years, they pay their dues, blah, 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 but they never get their five years. And uh, so their pension never vests. 100%. Yeah, that's a big one too, right? You get the five years and since after was, you know, previously split from SAG, they have two different pensions. They still do. So I'm qualified on one, but not the other, or I'm vested on one, but not the other. And then I'm like, I would have to do like radio spots to fill up my after one or something, something very specific, you know, I'm like, I don't know. I mean, yeah, I guess it's possible, but that's a lot of radio ads. <laughs> I, would have to I would have to drum up. You'd have to, I, you'd have to be a personal injury attorney spokesperson or something. I mean, I don't know. Okay. So couple, couple of things off that it would be like, so Martin for your, uh, for your pension to vest, you have to do $10,000 worth of radio ads in Topeka, Kansas each year. And if you, if you pull that off, uh, you're all good. Uh, about the uh, the personal injury lawyer situation, which I'm always thinking about for my radio job, how to drum up more sponsors. And and I don't know why we don't have more personal injury attorneys on the radio because they all are on every single billboard. I yeah. almost feel like they advertise so much. They're almost encouraging you to get hurt at work, right? right? right. It's almost like they're 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 showing you, oh, there's a slippery stairwell. I mean, hey, yeah. you know, it's almost like they're incentivizing you to get hurt. Well, they are. And it doesn't help when you see the testimonials, when the, when the guy or girl looks perfectly healthy, you know, and they're like, you know, well, so-and-so helped me recover $1.3 million. And you're like, that's, that's amazing. And you look great. What a, what a win-win. But the reality is like, <laughs> Okay, that means there was damages of over one something million. So that always makes you like, well, what happened? Right? Like, I don't know if I want that part of it. And that's where too, you always see movies about this. You watch Better Call Saul, but then you get into that spot yourself. You're working for a company. Maybe they did something. They didn't treat right. you real well. Potentially you had a, you try to get a raise. They didn't give it to you. Then you get rear-ended in a vehicle and you're like, oh, Oh, you know, you just, you start to do a little research and kind of see what's out there. You're making this so clear to me. I just realized the whole time at, at, I should have slipped and fell at the podium at the SAG after. <laughs> mm -hmm. This is, this is I, I can't believe I never thought of this. I should have pulled the podium onto me, fell backwards, right? Had, you know, I would have, I would have rehearsed it, of course, sure. <laughs> protected my face or something. But then I, right there, I would have had 200 witnesses. Missed opportunity, Martin. Missed opportunity. All right, bro. I mean, we went we went into union contracts. I like it. I like it too. I like anything that has to do with business because it's interesting. You know, I learned I learned something. Uh, what did you learn today about? No, again, as as being somebody who's in AFTRA, but but hearing your side of it, that was very interesting to me. Um, and also, I don't know how you want to end this, but uh, we basically had. Snowmageddon in St. Louis, which to be honest with you, getting back to the whole local news situation, you know how local news, I, I still have a soft spot. So when people say, oh, the meteorologists, they're never right. I'm like, no, they're actually, they're, they're more right than they are wrong, but we really, we really play it up when they're wrong. And, and here's you and I, who we give, we give <laughs> faulty sports betting picks every day. Nobody holds us accountable yet. If the meteorologist you know, when they're really wrong, I get it. If they predict the end of the world, everybody goes to the grocery store, people cancel events, people cancel school, it doesn't happen. But in St. Louis, they predicted a week out, they were going to get a ton of ice on a Wednesday and a ton of snow on a Thursday. And we got it exactly that way. But we had no school Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, my work, the radio station didn't make us come in on Thursday. 
So it goes back to that whole, you know, snow days are great when your kids. Yeah. Uh, I like watching my kids playing in the snow, my daughter sledding snowman. But then when you don't have school, it's not as much fun for the parents when you then have to work and deal with no school and your crazy ass kids. Yeah. hundred percent. When you're a kid, it's, I have vivid memories of snow days and blizzards and it was amazing. It was amazing. It was like, you, you know, especially if it started hitting the night before. So you knew you already kind of knew, right. You're like, it keeps coming down. This is great. I'm gonna go to bed. And by the time I wake up, we're going to be in great shape. And then you wake up early and you already know we would watch the ticker on the TV. Do you ever remember doing this? I don't oh, know. Yeah. Yeah. And you wait for your elementary to be announced or read it right. You had to go, there it is. There it is. That's us. And then you're straight outside and you're sledding and you're, and, and you're killing it. I mean, it's unbelievable. And, and I'm in Florida now, so I won't be getting snow days, but the only equivalent I have down here, Charlie, is when she's sick and home from daycare or like they did a couple weeks ago, they shut down the daycare because of COVID. Because yeah. a lot of kids were getting it and they just shut it down, which is like, I get it. But then you're like, okay, we're home now. I need to uh, keep you entertained for 12 hours. Oh, yeah. And do all of my stuff as well. Here's, what, here's yeah. what's funny about the ticker, which you probably haven't seen in a while since you've been living in LA, Tampa. But going back to when you're living in cold weather areas, what's hilarious about the ticker now is that they're not just putting schools on it. Like, I also know this for a fact, businesses are trying to use the ticker as a way to let folks know that they're open. So it used to be like, okay, I, I went to Washington local schools. So Washington local schools, two hour delay, Toledo public schools closed, whatever it was. Now on the ticker, like we joke about this all the time. It'll be like uh, Zumba class is canceled. Uh, six to eight Zumba. It'll be like uh, early bird yeah. retirement home bingo class is, canceled. Uh, is canceled six to eight. And then, but another business will be like, Tom's Tire, still open. It's almost like, <laughs> and that, that was a bad example, but places- No, it was, a, it was a great example because Tom is like, dude, we got all weather. We got, we got snow. We got, got chains. He's yes. like, we're staying open. He goes, I don't care if it's me alone. We're staying open. <laughs> but think about that. That's great advertising. If you can call up the local TV station and yeah, yeah, we're still open, put it on the ticker. If you can get that free advertising and- it's not for like a tire shop, but again, if you're a place that's still open, if, if you're the Zumba class, if you're the bingo center and you're still open, you can put that on there and get a nice little free advertising on the ticker. Nobody told the Zumba class people that they could just email their class enrollees that they don't, <laughs> they're like, you know what? We gotta, we gotta broadcast this. We got There's going to be in the tens of people really concerned about, uh, you know, the nine 30 kickoff. <laughs> important stuff. Oh, I love it, dude. Okay. So because this is the last show before the Super Bowl, though, um, and I know we didn't, it, you know, it's a, it's a week away. I don't like the week, the two weeks in between the Super Bowl every time. I feel like back in the day, it used to sometimes be two weeks, sometimes be one week. Now it's always two weeks. I think we at least have to give our, our, our picks with score. We got to right? give it. We got to give it. All right. Okay. So first. I have, I currently have, mm -hmm. if this is updated, Looks like the consensus where most of these lines are is the Rams minus four and a half. So I'm seeing some places at four. I guess this will all depend on where you can get it. Minus well, four, minus four and a half. So let's be aggressive and say it's minus four and a half. Yeah. Then we, then we also have wins and losses and we, we get rid of the tie possibility. And so what's our over under? Uh, that has moved down from fit. Looks like it opened at 50 and a half. It's now. 48 and a half looks like pretty much across the board. That's what I thought. All right, I'll go first. I think the Rams are going to win, unfortunately, but I'll, I'll take it in a close game. I know most, most winners in the Super Bowl actually cover, so I'm going against historic uh, tradition here, but I will take the Bengals if you're giving me four and a half to keep it close, but I think the Rams are going to win, unfortunately, which will piss off all of St. Louis here. And we did this show last week. I think, I think the total was at 49 when we talked about it, but the first thing I thought was under. So if you're giving me 48 and a half, would not surprise me if it's like a 24, 21 score. So I will go Bengals plus four and a half and I will take the under 48 and a half. 
I'm riding your coattails. And I also realized I need to get back to my roots and that's placing tremendous parlays. Uh, and I've gotten away from that with the bets I've been placing the last couple of weeks. I've been, I've been this, you know, vanilla straight single bet guy. And that's, you know, I woke up and I was like, no wonder I'm losing. I'm not be, you know, I'm not doing it the way I want to do it. The way I want to do it is at least combine the bet, at least multiply my winnings. You know sure. what I mean? So I'm, I'm all in, I'm all in on the exact same bet and I'm going to put that bet in and you know, I'm just, I guess I have to figure out like, what am I going to buy with all that cash? Here's what you do though. And this is where as somebody who loves, I love sports gambling. I have had D gen activities before, but I'm like college basketball. There's too many teams to follow. You could gamble yeah. every night. There's a million games every night. Oh, Belmont's playing Murray state. Like I just don't want to even have to look at who Belmont has on their roster. It's what really you hard. Should do, you, should, you should mix your parlay for the Super Bowl. You got to be able to find some, some Olympic events, like Olympic <laughs> skiing, maybe women's hockey. So your parlay is like, you know, the Belgian, the Belgian ski team, short track, Russia, you know, the Chinese uh, skier, and then, and then the Bengals, to, uh, Bengals plus four and a half. Something like that. It's a good, yeah, it's a great, it's a good combination. It's very logical. And uh, you know what? I'm sure the payout is fantastic when you first see the uh, slip. <laughs> and then you're like, oh, I didn't know they had COVID. Oh man, the Netherlands, they all have COVID. Yeah, 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 yeah. I didn't, oh man, I didn't read up on, uh, on the Belgian curling team. I had no idea that, you know, the main guy was out. I didn't know that he was here. He didn't even travel. I should. I definitely should have read about that. He didn't even travel to the games. Unbelievable. I didn't get the injury report. I didn't get the, oh uh, the inactive list. Well, let's see. Let's see what happens, buddy. All right, man. Talk to you after the big one. See ya.